Here's another vector. Please break this into components. We have to draw a right triangle uh, using the overall vector as the hypotenuse. Now, we could draw the right triangle either above or below the overall vector. But if we draw it below the overall vector, it won't include the angle that we were originally given. That wouldn't be a disaster. We could still certainly figure out these two angles in the new triangle. But it's more conventional to draw the right triangle, in this case, above the uh, hypotenuse so that it includes the angle we were originally given. With legs parallel to the axis. Let's label the sides. I hope that's something that's becoming automatic for you, labeling each part of your triangle. Another thing that should be automatic is putting in the arrows. The overall vector was pointing down and to the right. So we should have components pointing down and to the right. Here's the sign we were given. Here's the angle we were given. Uh, and we can label hypotenuse adjacent and opposite sides. Eventually, you'll get to the point where it's not necessary for you to label the adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse, but you'll just be able to identify those in your head. Um, so you can uh, use your own judgment for that. Uh, but if you find that you're making any careless mistakes because you get confused about who's adjacent and who's opposite, well, then it's better to write stuff down. Uh, keep writing stuff down until you're sure that you're not going to be led into careless mistakes by doing more of stuff in your head. Well, we need to find the adjacent side. We use the hypotenuse, and should we use the sine or the cosine? Well, the cosine deals with the adjacent side, cut. So we should use the cosine of the angle that we're focusing on, which is the 15 degree angle. Usually we focus on the angle that we were given. Remember that if you're ever in any doubt about this equation, you can just go back to first principles. You can just say cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And if you just do a little algebra and rearrange, you would get this equation over here. Now, our adjacent side is a sub x. The adjacent side is a sub x. Now, you didn't write just a sub x here, though, did you? No, of course not, because we're talking about the length of the adjacent side, which is just the magnitude of a sub x indicated with a dot. So I hope everybody used that dot. Um, maybe I'll remind you one more time. Um, you won't see this dot in the textbook. Uh, this is not an official symbol from your textbook, and your instructor won't use it. Uh, the dot is a symbol that I made up, uh, but I made it up because uh, in my experience of working with students, um, students that are having difficulty with this material really need a way to distinguish between when they're looking at a variable for the signed component and when they're focusing on the variable for the magnitude of the component. So I think it's really unfortunate that your textbooks usually use the same symbol for the signed component and for the magnitude of the component. Um, so uh, I think for a beginning student, it's really valuable to have two separate symbols. Uh, this symbol with the dot to indicate when you're focusing on the magnitude and the symbol without the dot for when you're not focusing uh, on the magnitude. It's easy for your uh, instructor to keep track of what they're doing without the dot because they've got so much practice. But for a beginning student, it's hard to keep track of what you're doing unless you use separate symbols for separate things. A variable with a dot when you're focusing on a magnitude, and a variable without a dot when you're focusing on the sine component. The hypotenuse here was 9, uh, and we've got cosine 15. Getting our calculator, we're still focusing on the magnitude with the dot. 9 cosine 15 is 8.7. This is a magnitude, so it's not a signed number. I don't put in a plus or minus sign. But now I have to figure out the signed component as our next step. I use the magnitude, and then I look for the sign. Well, uh, a sub x is pointing to the right, and the positive x direction is in the right. That would be positive 8.7. Build into the sketch. Now we try to find the opposite side. We use the hypotenuse. And so, the sign tells you about the opposite side. 
opposite sign is a sub y, but it's the magnitude of a sub y. Hypotenuse is 9 times sine 15. Uh, 9 times uh, sine 15 is 2.3. Now we're ready for the signed component, not the dot. Positive y direction is up, but a sub y is pointing in the negative y direction. So this should be negative 2.3. Build it into the sketch. Be tough on yourself. Don't be satisfied with getting these right. You should be getting them right quickly and efficiently and confidently, and you should be using the precise notation that I'm using on the board so that you'll have that notation under your command when you move on to harder problems as well.